Negotiation is a process. And one of the most important questions that I have to answer as an investment banker is what process are we going to use? You see, as a sell-side M&A advisor, I'm negotiating two things simultaneously. I'm negotiating process, so the rules and how the buyers have to work with us, as well as the substance, so the price and the terms of a transaction. There's somewhat of a smorgasbord um, of options that I could choose from a process perspective. But at the end of the day, in order to create a process that really maximizes the value and the price for my client, I need to form a process that incorporates everything we just discussed, right? Number one, a process that allows us to ascertain information about every buyer. What are the buyer's motivations? What are the buyer's incentives? Are they the, the level of desire the buyer has in order to do the deal? Is there any buyer that has a necessity to do a deal, which is extremely rare, but it can't happen. So it's ferreting out information. Also, my process needs to be able to protect information and conceal information on my side. So I've got to be able to conceal my client's desires, his or her necessities, how badly they want to do a deal. Uh, if there's any particular problems, needs to be concealed. And so the process has to help me with that. Number two, the process has to provide maximum leverage through optionality, meaning I have to have enough competitors in here to drive up the price, right? I have to be running my own auction. I have to have a lot of buyers bidding against each other to help me raise the price. And so in the process that I need to create, although I will be doing some cross-table negotiation, right? I will be negotiating directly with a buyer. I also want buyers to be doing same side of the table negotiation. So if you imagine a handful of buyers sitting on the other side of the table, I want them negotiating amongst themselves through competition to bid up the price. So the process has to ferret out information, conceal information. It has to introduce the concept of competition, which gives me leverage. I also want to be able to use time, right? So in setting the process rules, I will be setting deadlines throughout where all buyers will have to act simultaneously. There's bid deadlines where bids have to be submitted at a certain time. I need to be able to control that. And that allows me to set a deadline that impacts the other side simultaneously, but does not impact me, right? So I'm using time. I'm also using time for other advantages. I'm using time from an investment perspective. I've got one unique asset, my client's business. I've got 25 buyers. I want each of those 25 buyers to go through a process to continue in, to invest time, money, and resources, as well as time into the relationship with my client, the seller, and the seller actually is doing that simultaneously with 25 buyers. So I'm able to create a tremendous amount of investment over a period of months with the buyers, uh, which will positively impact the leverage that I have in the situation. So I'm using time, I'm using information, I'm using leverage through competition. And I'm also strengthening my credibility from the very onset. Let's say that you own a business, and you've been talking to one particular acquirer for a few weeks now. You've gone out to dinner, you, he's come to your office, you've started to talk some numbers, you've shared some numbers. He comes back and says, I wanna buy your business for $20 million and you wanna sell it for $30 million. If this goes on for some weeks and then at the very last minute you tell him, hey, I really want more money for my business, I'm gonna go out and introduce competition into this process, I'm going to go out and talk to some other acquirers, this could do one of a couple of things. Number one, the buyer could automatically get his act in gear because he doesn't want competition and he could raise his price. Or two, and what's often very common, is he'll get frustrated. He'll feel like you had built a rapport with him, that you wanted to sell your business to him, and then all of a sudden now, because you weren't getting your way, you were going to introduce some competition, um, which is adverse, of course, to his position. And so that frustrates the relationship and you lose some credibility. And I'm a firm believer that if you start from the onset, introducing all the leverage factors and molding the perception of the other side, 
you can maintain credibility throughout the process. And what I mean by that is by bringing competition in right off the bat, where all of the buyers know that there's a variety of buyers here. This is a formal sell side process. They will be competing against other buyers in order to have the opportunity to buy this asset. You're not switching anything up on them last minute, and you can maintain that credibility throughout the process. So these key components go into how we can construct a formal sell side process that will maximize the value of your business.